It's usually men. It's usually men. In my experience, it's usually men. There, I have met some women who do this sort of thing too, but it's mostly men. Um, how do you go through life thinking that you can just flatly lie to people? And that we're all going to buy up your bullshit. Like, you're a grown-ass man. You were the president of the United States, for fuck's sake. And you think you can just fucking pass off any bullshit to us and we're just going to buy it up? Oh my god. I can't believe... Like, he can't get... Uh, he's got so many court cases against him right now. He lost all of his election challenges. Dozens and dozens of election challenges he lost. This is super interesting. One of the most interesting interviews I've seen in a while. Oh, Nigel man. Farage was a member of the British Parliament under the UKIP party. That's the UK Independence Party. It's a right-wing populist... Red well, and one thing to understand is that the UK is a parliamentarian system, so they actually have several parties. It's not like the US. The US is constantly... Like, we have a lot of people on the horseshoe theory that are, like, far right, far left... And they're like, oh, but we need multiple parties, blah, blah, blah. That's not what we have in America, you guys. That is simply not how our political system works. And in the UK, they do have a parliamentarian system where they have several parties. Totally different political system than what's happening in the US. So stop fucking comparing us to them type party that has a lot of overlap with MAGA Trumpism, as disturbing and hilarious as that is. Oh. Nigel Farage for a while has been saying, I don't think Trump should keep talking about how 2020 was rigged. Whether it was or wasn't rigged, Trump shouldn't keep talking about it. It's not going to help Trump win in 2024. Nigel Farage interviewed Trump and actually said to him, I wouldn't keep talking about that. And Trump kind of gets... This is like the nicest possible way to tell Trump to shut the fuck up and move on. Literally the nicest way he can say it. And so many other media personalities have been unwilling to actually call him out on his bullshit. The rest of the country is looking at this like, oh my God, this man is insane. He's pushing forward lies. He's um, creating a situation where people want to hurt other people. And y'all just fucking sit there and be like, yeah, Mr. Trump, you're a serious dude. We'll take what you have to say for, you know, it's for real, right? Why? Why are you putting us in a scenario where people are going to get hurt because of his lies? It's defensive and says, well, listen, I'm talking about it because you brought it up. But then later says, but it was rigged. Okay, let's dive into this interview Fascinating. Take a look at this. My point to you is if you're going to win this next year in November 2024, you're not going to win it talking about what happened last time. But Nigel, you brought it up. Got, haven't you got a set of positive message? You, brought, you, brought, you brought this up to me. I didn't bring it up to no, you. No, sure. You know, you mentioned sure. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, look, it was rigged. Yeah. And I say that. I'll always say that. Uh, it doesn't mean that out of a one-hour speech, I'm going to devote half of it to this. I might devote... Except he kind of does. Ten seconds to it. Okay. But the election was rigged. It was a rigged election. It was a very dishonest election. I don't know. It wasn't rigged. It was not rigged, asshole. And the fact that you keep bringing it up as though y you can just say it over and over again and then brainwash people into believing your bullshit, that's like a child. You're a, you're a goddamn child. If you want to run, which, by the way, I I'm glad that you're crashing and burning. I I'm glad that you're crashing and burning. But the reality is, if you were to run and try and actually get the votes that you need to get elected which you're not going to get because <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to get those votes because you are a big baby um if you want to win a presidential election you you s submit an emotional argument about how you're going to bring the nation forward and that's exactly the opposite of what you have done You've sent us into reverse. You have demonized um, minority groups. You have demonized disabled people. You have demonized 
the LGBTQIA community. You, you have cut off so many voting bases that all you got is potentially the evangelicals. And you're probably going to lose them too because they've already been slipping. They've already been slipping. And depending on what Mike Pence said last week during his testimony, you probably lost them for good, dude. Oh my God, even with you. You're, you're a giant child. You're ugly. I know how he loves this shit because he likes to do it to everybody else, right? He's ugly, fat, has a fake spray tan that looks orange on him. When he doesn't update his tan, he looks even older because he looks fucking pale as shit. <clears throat> Normally I don't attack people's appearances, but that is Trump's go-to. He likes to attack everybody's appearances. And that motherfucker is so goddamn ugly. The only reason women sleep with him is because of his bank account. Because they know that even if he fucks up a business, he can still get loans. He can still get loans. That motherfucker is so disgusting. I just watched the other video the Midas Touch video about how he hired his own bagpiper pipers and uh, red carpet for his arrival in Scotland while he's trying to evade going to court for the rape case. This guy is such a pathetic weasel. And what's really sad is like I know a lot of I know a lot of other dudes who are just as willing to lie and try and create an alternate universe just to cover up their own fucking mistakes that nigel farage is correct and what i mean by that is when you survey maga voters they overwhelmingly believe that it was rigged when you survey republican voters in general they also to a lesser degree than the hardcore maga types but they also have fallen for this idea that 2020 was rigged so i don't have the answer empirically as to whether in a general election on balance the message that 2020 was rigged as part of a 2024 election brings voters in or pushes voters away it's not obvious to me one way or the other i think is the point that i'm trying to make trump continuing with the election was rigged stuff even during this interview uh, the election was rigged and rupert murdoch should have talked about it but rupert murdoch doesn't believe he can win a court case on that but rupert murdoch's wrong and whoever settled this case for that much money and i think it was an insult not only to fox it was an insult to all the people that work there it was an insult to everybody that knows what happened during that election Number one, they didn't use the legislatures. Number two, if you just look into modern times, just look over the last couple of hundreds of legislatures and judges have already ruled against this motherfucker. Fucking move on. Stop causing chaos in America because you are like, you're a fucking traitor to the nation at this point. You are causing so much chaos for us. You're riling up your dumbass people who don't know how to read or write, who just listen to the words coming out of your mouth, which often are contradictory. Fucking shut up about your bullshit. If you want to run for president, run on the issues. But we're still going to vote your ass down because you're such a goddamn problem for us. Months, the FBI dealt with Twitter. They call it Twitter files. Understand, none oh of this... God. It's not only that none of this proves it was rigged. None of this even relates to the election in a direct way. That was cheating. Look at look at I, the 51 different... I have no doubt about that. Look at the 51 different intelligence oh, agents, so-called intelligence agents. They all lied, 100%. They lied. All of this stuff is cheating. And then you look at Truth to Vote, where hundreds of thousands of ballots were stuffed in the ballot boxes. They were, they were stuffed with... Usually we do like a ham and gruyere, but they might have stuffed them with something different. So... Trump's legal advice, remember, his brilliant legal advice from the guy who lost 60-something court cases related to the 2020 election, his legal advice to Fox News was prove that Trump really won, and then by definition it wouldn't have been defamation. Where that, that, 
that ultimately Fox's lawyers did not go that way, and they agreed to pay seven hundred eighty-seven and a half million dollars yeah, get- um, to Dominion Voting Systems. They can't. They cannot prove that he won because he didn't fucking win, and that's why he lost all those goddamn co- court cases. This clown is going around the world trying to convince people that they need to rise up and overturn the U.S. government because he didn't get his goddamn way. He's a giant fucking baby. Uh, Other uh, items from this interview that are certainly interesting. Trump insisting that he will end the Russian incursion into Ukraine within 24 hours. Maybe in that wacky town hall that's scheduled for next week, Caitlin Collins can ask exactly how would he do that. I will end that war in one day. It'll take 24 hours. I know Zelensky well. I know Putin well. I would get that ended in a period of... You can break that deal. 100% 100% it would be easy. That deal would be easy. A lot of it has to do with the money. A lot of it has to do with the military. You know, the, yeah. Trump would wrap it up quickly. He would go, listen, Ukraine goes to Putin. It's now part of Russia. Let's end this entire thing. Yep. Uh, in, in all seriousness, I would oh. love for Trump to be pressed just once on exactly how he would end that conflict in 24 hours. The topic of the coronation of the new British king came up, and Trump says he was extraordinarily surprised that Biden would not be attending. And Mr. Biden's not coming. What does that say about his relationship with the UK? Because we get the feeling here. Yeah, he's very, very pro Ireland. He completely ignores the fact that Biden is in fact an English name. He's got English relatives. He doesn't seem to like us very much. I don't think he can do it physically, actually. I think that it's hard for him to do it physically. Um, I think getting over here for him, he's got a lot of things going and a lot of strange things happen. Wow, dude, because, like, literally I've seen him speak and he can walk up and down a rail better than you, bitch. But (laughs) certainly he should be here as our representative of our country. Uh, I was surprised when I heard that he wasn't coming. He would think he would be here. He'll be in Delaware where he spends a lot of time. He spent a lot of time there during the election. In the bunker. So, I don't know, but it's... It is bunker. So, listen, um, there's a long-held tradition that American presidents don't go to British coronations. Jill Biden is going, and that's fine. But there's actually nothing particularly unusual about that. But, again, it's this is an alternate universe. Sticking with the subject of um, uh, royal elements... Uh, th- topics related to the royal family. Donald Trump said that Meghan Markle treated the Queen very disrespectfully. Oh God! Which uh, I mean, God, this this is. Uh... <laughs> I think it's going to be a great day, and I think that they will do a great job. Yeah. And he loves the country. Really, I got to know him quite well, and he loves the country. Really loves the country, and he loved his mother, and that's why I thought it was she was yeah. treated so disrespectfully by mm-hmm. Meghan and. Just no reason to do that. I was actually surprised that Harry was invited, to be honest. Wow. There you go. Very, very surprising. And, of course, Trump's the guy who truly disrespected the former queen. Um, uh, He was late and kept her waiting, and then he gracelessly stepped in front of her. I mean, just everything is backwards. Everything is the opposite of what... Yeah, let's look at that. Okay, here we go. Here's the footage of Trump with the queen. First of all, not only is this completely unacceptable because she's the Queen of England, but it's unacceptable etiquette to do that to a lady that you're walking with. I literally, I, I was dating somebody who, um, 
and I'm injured, right? I'm, 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 um, I have an injury. It makes me a little bit slower right now. And, um, did the, the clutch hold of just above his elbow because I need a little bit of assistance to walk. And I remember him telling me, you're such a lady. That's because it's goddamn etiquette, you guys. <laughs> it's fucking etiquette that you, um, are attentive to a lady when she's walking with you. If you're on the street, you put her on the inside of the street and you walk on the outside of the street. This is fucking etiquette. Any polite man would do this stuff, but Trump is not a polite man. And it extends so far that he doesn't even know how to be polite in the company of the Queen of England. Even the royal guard walking behind her looks fucking horrified. It is. It's, <laughs> this man is so crass. He is so rude. He is so self-centered. He, he literally doesn't know how to fucking do basic etiquette. And you would think somebody as rich as him would have had these types of instructions growing up. But oh no, no, no. <laughs> Not with Trump. Fucking horrifying. All right. Here in this stunning sunshine city, where borders bump up against themselves and cultures collide in a euphoric dance. This is super interesting. One of the most interesting interviews I've seen in a while. Nigel Farage was a member. He loves the country and he loved his mother, and that's why I thought it was she was treated so disrespectfully by Meghan, and just no reason to do that. I was actually surprised that. Harry was invited, to be honest. There you go. Very, very surprising. And of course, Trump's the guy who truly disrespected the former queen. Um, uh, he was late and kept her waiting, and then he gracelessly stepped in front of her. I mean, just everything is backwards. Everything is the opposite of what this guy says. Uh, and then lastly, Nigel Farage asking Trump, so are you going to win next year? And Trump's response, not exactly projecting huge confidence. Final thought. Are you going to win next year? I think we have a very good chance. Uh, <laughs> the economy is not good. I'll make it good. Everyone knows. You know, everyone knows, they, even Democrats, they say, well, we agree that Putin would have never gone in. He would have, I don't, you're not going in. So going into a word salad that's unrelated after saying, I think we've got a shot. Putin would have never gone into Ukraine. President Xi of China would never even be talking about Taiwan. We had that conversation strongly. Uh, I stopped uh, North Korea from doing some really bad things in my relationship. All right, so he goes and talks about other stuff. Yeah. Trump does something that is often seen. I, I know that this is going to sound so pejorative, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm being totally serious. I'm not saying Trump is wildly mentally ill or anything like that. Like, he might be, but, but I'm just not saying it here. There is an observation that is often done when someone is evaluated psychiatrically about whether they have this sort of like tangential thinking. And Trump has it to an incredible degree where he simply asked, are you going to win next year? And he talks about his relationship with Kim Jong-un. Yeah. And it's really, I mean, you call it a feature or a bug of Trump's speech, but it is there very strongly. So famous last words, I think we, who's the we? I think we have a good chance at winning in 2024. Yeah. Bizarre interview. 
and all coming around the same time that Trump got some very bad legal news. Let's talk about that next. If you're like me and you love the nostalgia of enjoying a bowl of cereal oh, sometimes on, as an adult, check out our sponsor, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon can... is the breakfast cereal, strawberry milkshake, uh, and peaches and cream. Okay. I sometimes don't... you just feel like sitting down with a bowl. I don't think he's actually going to get to the next segment because sometimes he pumps something up that's coming up on his show, but he breaks it into clips. Um, but the reality is, um, Trump caused a lot of us to get laid off because of the pandemic, because of his non-response to the pandemic, because of the fact that, uh, the medical facilities didn't even have enough PPE to cover them. Everybody was getting sick and dying. We couldn't even, uh, buy cleaning supplies. I was boiling my clothes in fabric softener for two months because I couldn't buy detergent. I had the best I could do was cover my face in a bandana for the f first few months. That motherfucker fucked us over so hard. And a lot of us lost jobs. And if we talk about like what kind of jobs we're getting back now, they're, they are low income paying jobs. These are not the kind of six figure jobs some of us had before we got fucking laid off by this motherfucker and his bad strategy as a president. So, you guys want him again? You want this lying motherfucker who's just going to be like, Mmm, it didn't go my way, so I'm going to lie about it again. And I'm going to do it all over the world. And I'm going to convince the craziest motherfuckers in America to be incredibly violent and take you all down. That's what you want again? Fuck Trump.